In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to approach creating fabric shaders in Arnold for Cinema 4D. Now, if you take a look at this picture and uh, basically the most important characteristic that most fabrics show is if you take a look at this uh, fold particular here, you can see we have this dark uh, part at the faces that are facing us directly. And as the faces becoming more perpendicular to our viewing direction, they become uh, basically brighter and fuzzier, right? So that's what we need to take into consideration. So let's start with some very basic example, uh, maybe uh, just a simple uh, velvet uh, would be nice. All right, so let's get started. Um, so this is the scene that we are having and I'm going to create a new standard shader. And let's name it say velvet simple right the only thing that we need to be worried about when creating fabric materials in most example is just diffuse color simply so let me just come here and apply this and as you can see I have a normal parameter stack applied to this uh, fabric object and what I've changed here is I have some subdivision set to cat clark and the iteration set to 2 uh, so we can have a smoother result and in one of the examples uh, we are going to be using displacement mapping so we need to increase the iteration uh, even uh, more to get the uh, result that we are after so let's start with this I'm gonna increase my diffuse weight to 1 and let's start with a facing ratio node. So uh, we can use a utility node and use a curve to actually control uh, this uh, principle that I mentioned. But I think an easier way for most fabrics, we can simply use a facing ratio node because facing ratio node is a very specific node that does exactly this. So we can control uh, what values uh, between 0 and 1 will be applied to uh, the faces that are looking at us directly and the faces that are uh, looking away from us. So I can let's directly connect this and press play. So now we want the faces that are looking at us, looking at us directly to be uh, basically darker and uh, the perpendicular faces to be brighter. Obviously we need to invert this effect. So right now you can see this is what we are getting. So for example, you can see this uh, fold here, we're getting this dark effect. And as it, the faces are moving away, we're getting these brighter colors, right? So now I can control the bias. If you just take a look at this sphere here, you can possibly see the effect of the facing ratio not a bit better. So something like this, you can see we have bias, which is very self-explanatory. And also we have the gain. So the gain basically controls the fall off, right? So for example, in this case, I can go to maybe something like this. And I'm going to decrease the fall off. So now at the very edges, we get this very bright color. Now I can actually use this facing ratio node uh, to control the mixture between these two colors. So this is a mix node and let's create a purple example. So for the first color, I have some colors prepared here so we don't waste our time. This is the first color you can see very dark purple. And for the second color, I'm going to be using this one. And the facing ratio nodes now will be used as the mix amount and the mix will be connected to the diffuse color and the standard shader so if i just connected the mix color here you can see we are getting this effect and if i connect the standard shader directly this is what we're gonna get so you can see it's already looking uh, very velvety maybe i can just uh, increase the gain a tad maybe to something like this and now if I run the IPR we are gonna get that 
velvet you look. So I'm just going to wait uh, for the IPR and I'll be back when it's finished. So here is our render and as you can see it's looking quite like velvet. Now if you take a look at this image uh, you can see in this example we have this a bit you know it's a bit fuzzier compared to what we have here. Now what I can do to achieve that if I simply duplicate that and let's name it I don't know fuzzy here I'm just going to let's So I'm just going to duplicate this mix node and use the same facing ratio to control its mix amount. But now I'm going to be using brighter colors. So let's go to something like this and something maybe like this. Right, now we have the first mix node and the second mix node. And let's use a layer color node. This is going to be our first layer. And this is going to be our second layer, layer two, and so layer one. Now for layer two alpha, this brighter version of our shader, I'm going to be using a noise. And this time I'm going to be using this uh, cell noise here from the AL shaders, right? So if I come here and actually apply this shader here we have the cell noise and I'm just going to increase the frequency to something like 1000 and before just rendering the IPR unfortunately you can see the preview has some problems as we copied this and we need to close cinema 40 and open it again to have a uh, you know a true preview here just it's the preview from the uh, copied material and I don't know uh, what we can do but we, we can close in for the open it again but I don't think it matters that much so what I'm going to do is use this uh, cell noise to control the layer to alpha right so if I just just hold on shift and maybe render this part you can possibly see the result there you go. Now obviously uh, what we can do is use a RAM float node here. So here's the RAM float node and let me just take a look at it. Obviously uh, now from the white uh, spots we are going to see our second uh, mix node which is the brighter version. I'm just going to really darken this guy so we don't see that much maybe something like this and now I can use this to control my layer 2 alpha and let's see if it's going to get a bit fuzzier compared to our previous render So as you can see from this preview, it's not only getting a tad brighter compared to our previous render, it's also getting a bit fuzzier. We can use bump also, but I think this is a bit more uh, better approach uh, compared to using bump. Using bump, bump normally makes it uh, a bit sharp and for velvet, it needs to be soft and smooth. So let me just uh, render the entire thing and see what we're gonna get and I will be back with you uh, with uh, the next shader. So here is our render, and as you can see, especially if I can show you in the picture viewer, uh, so this is our first render, and this is our second render. If I zoom in, this is our simple render, and this is our fuzzier version. So take a look at this. You can see it's obviously fuzzier, and there you go. So that's a simple way to add that fuzziness to your velvet shaders. Now, uh, if I uh, just take a look at this example here, you can see, for example, in this uh, shader, 
we have a slight pattern. You can see we have this slight fabric pattern that we can simply add. So let me just duplicate this shader and velvet fuzzy with, I don't know, pattern in bump. And let's apply it here. And let me just, again, so that's the shader. There you go. Now to add that pattern, I'm gonna be using an image node first. So let's see. So let's use this image, fabpattern.jpg. And let me just, first of all, see it on these, just run the IPR. So right now that's what we have. I think it's just being repeated just too much. So I'm going to use something like 0.2 for the scale. Now we can see that pattern, obviously. Great. And what I'm gonna do Use a sorry a bump to denote, and so this is going to be the standard shader is going to be our shader, and this is going to be our bump map. And if I connect this directly, and you can see right now the pattern is just. Uh, too obvious and uh, it's not gonna work uh, for a velvet shader so I'm going to maybe reduce this to something like 0.4 now as you can see we have that pattern slightly let's go to something like 0.3 let me see if it's going to be fine So I think this is enough and it's not that obvious right now. So let's just, I don't know, maybe even 0.25. Okay, that's better. And let me just go ahead and wait for the IPR so we can see the entire shader and I'll be back with you. So here is our shader and as you can see this pattern is adding a lot to this shader and if I compare it to the other examples that we have, so this is the first render, this is the second one and this is the third render and you can see that subtle pattern there. Perfect. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course Developing Realistic Shaders in Arnold for Cinema 4D Volume 1. To see the rest of this lesson and tons of other video tutorials, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. See you next time.